Welcome to July Fails. I've tried a lot of new products recently because I've planned quite a few big roundup videos like best and worst lip balms, you know, best and worst glossy balms and things like that. And throughout that process, because I'm trying so many products for those videos, I'm seeing a lot that I love and a lot that I don't love. So if you're sensing a theme, there's gonna be quite a lot of lip products. And I'll also leave linked on the screen my July favorites if you wanna see all the stuff I'm loving right now. But this video is obviously gonna be about the products that didn't really work out for me. And I'm gonna start with what's on my lips today. This is the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless matte lip blur something or other in the shade walk of no shame and I was basically just trying this on today for just one last shot to see if I would really like it and unfortunately I just don't think that it's the best liquid creamy matte lipstick that there is I do think the shade is pretty it's walk of no shame it's kind of like an orangey rusty reddish brown but as I'm looking at it it is so incredibly different from the rest of the walk of no shame colors I love walk of no shame the lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury I don't like the formula so I don't own it but I love that that color. It's like a beautiful, like warm berry brown. It's fantastic. This is nothing like that. This is just very terracotta orange. It's nothing like the other Walk of No Shame colors. So I was really disappointed in this shade range because Honey Blur and Nude Blur looked like straight up yellow and peach on my lips. It made me look kind of sick. Rose Blur was too bright. So beyond the shade issues for me with Walk of No Shame, all of the other shades are just not great. And I've heard so many people say the same thing. So I know that I'm not alone in that experience. Rose Blur was just way Way too bright pink like it just seemed like a drugstore lip color nothing like I would expect from the shade range of Charlotte Tilbury just seemed like very weird shades for the lightest shades of the range and then when I was in Malibu one day I went to Sephora and I swatched pillow talk and pillow talk medium and they were absolutely nothing like the other pillow talk and pillow talk medium shades so very strange also you know the formula is nice these are basically the same formula as the newer um, rose ink lip creams very very thin very lightweight. You can like barely feel them on your lips, but they have the same kind of drying quality to me that the MAC Powder Kiss liquid lipsticks have. And I just, I just don't like the way it feels. Like I can feel my lips getting a little crusty. Also, these are called the lip blurs and there is absolutely no blurring going on on my lips. Here's what the lip blurs look like up close. And hopefully you can see that there really isn't much blurring quality happening here. I'm not sure if the lighting or the camera is gonna affect that at all, but in person I can see every little lip line and it's just not the most flattering product I've ever tried. Instead, I would recommend something like the M Cosmetics Velvet Lip Creams. Those are actually blurring. They smooth over lip lines. They're super nice. Or the Sunny's Face Lip Dips, if you can get them. Those are my favorite velvet creamy matte lip liquid lipsticks. They're so comfortable. They're so blurring. So I would honestly save your money on the Charlotte Tilbury. Next up, I have the Make Beauty Eye Stylo Cream Eyeshadow Sticks. And I've actually already sent them to a follower. And so I don't have them in front of me, but I did film clips applying some of them. So first of all, the formula is so creamy. I feel like it's way too creamy. When you apply it on your eyes and blend it out, it just blends away into absolutely nothing. And when I build it up and build it up and build it up and I don't touch it so that the pigment stays, it ends up becoming a total creasy mess by the end of the day, really within 30 minutes. And it's so creamy that you have to be really careful not to twist up the product too much. Otherwise they're gonna break off. I heard that from all of my friends who gave me a warning before they sent me some of the shades. They were like, do not over twist these because all of them broke off. Also, all four of the shades I tried had almost no pigment. I got the shades Cultivate, Terrain, Horizon, and Sonar. And Horizon and Sonar were the darkest of those four and they still barely showed up on my lids. And I have fair to light complexion, so kind of weird that those didn't show up. And also the colors look nothing like they do on the website. Like Horizon is supposed to be this super beautiful, deep, warm brown. And on me, it was almost my exact same skin color. It was very strange. So I would definitely skip the Make Beauty eyeshadow crayons. Instead, I love the Vive Eye Wand. They are the best cream eyeshadow stick formula I have ever tried. They're creamy and blendable, but then they set down and they don't budge. They're super pigmented, but not too pigmented and not patchy. They're amazing, so I would definitely go for Vive instead. Next, sadly, another fail from Make Beauty, the Make Cream Supreme Lipsticks. Now, I really do like this formula, and I like that they're in a slimmer bullet because these are a very, very, very pigmented lipstick. So I like that it's a slimmer bullet so I can get a more precise line given how pigmented they are and how creamy they are. I do like that it has a subtle vanilla smell and the cream formula is really nice. It's not too slippery. It's not drying or anything like that. I just honestly couldn't find a single shade that I thought looked flattering on me. And I'll leave my lip launches video uh, linked on the screen above where I applied a lot of the shades from the range. I have since shipped a bunch of these to followers who wanted to try them. And I just really didn't feel like there was a single shade that really would work for me. 
here's a picture of the Make Beauty lipsticks. Um, while I do think there are some really cool shades, I just don't personally gravitate towards any of them. Like I would not wear all of those super dark purples and you know, the fuchsia pinks, the oranges, everything like that. Really the only color that would work for me is Equilibrium, which unfortunately I didn't get to try. It's like a kind of peachy pinky nude, but I do already have so many of those that it doesn't make sense for me to try that one. All the rest of these I thought just looked like absolute dog shit on me. Like atmospheric was super gray. I thought it made me look dead. You know, the darker ones were kind of patchy, but that's just because I have fair to light skin. I'm sure that these would go on beautifully and smooth if you had deep skin and you were wearing the darker shades. Truthfully, I just don't think any of these shades are flattering on someone with my skin. If you like really bright, bold lips with a bunch of different colors, you might love this. But for someone who's more of like a natural makeup person, minimal makeup person like I am, I think you give these a pass. Another product that I've decluttered and sent to a subscriber is the MAC Squirt Plumping Gloss Stick. These have definitely gone viral online, which is so strange to me because it's really nothing different than like the Hourglass Phantom Volumizing Glossy Lips. I do remember it being quite a strong menthol compared to other kind of cooling, plumping products on the market. So it just wasn't the one for me because menthol dries my lips out so much. I also didn't really feel like the formula was anything to write home about. It was quite sheer, quite slippery, and I just didn't love the colors. So for me, the MAC Squirt line is a pass. Another product I have purchased and already decluttered is the Diptyque Candle in Beverly Hills. It's a city exclusive, which means you can only buy it online for the month of September or year round at that boutique. So in the Diptyque store in Beverly Hills. Recently, they had opened it up online where you could briefly buy all of the city candles. So I blind bought Beverly Hills and then I bought backups of my favorite Miami and New York candles. Beverly Hills was supposed to be a little bit floral and then a little minty and a little citrusy. But to me, all I could smell was like intense florals and I really don't like florals, but I did think that the vessel was beautiful. And if you're someone who likes florals, then you might really love that candle. Um, but for me personally, I was really looking for something similar to my favorite candle, Misen Sur's uh, Menthe a Lowe, which is their mint water candle. I was looking for just some minty kind of candles that would be really refreshing for the summertime. And unfortunately, Beverly Hills just did not punch through with the mint for me like I wanted it to. The last product that I've already sent to a subscriber is the Bubel and Monday Born Meridium Lip Oil. It was a product in collaboration with Bubel from Tenny Panosian. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. But I tried the lip oil and it's a nice kind of like cafe latte kind of color. But for me, it is one of the most thin, slippery formulas I've ever tried. It just like, it would literally just like slide right outside my lip lines. And that's the kind of product that I tend to avoid because I don't have a lot of definition. I don't have much of a lip border to my lips and they are on the thinner side. And so I just don't like products that are really thin and slippery. I find that they're not very nourishing. They just kind of evaporate and then I have to keep reapplying and reapplying and reapplying. And I just thought that it was nothing special. There was almost no pigment. It didn't condition my lips. It just added a little bit of a glossy shine and that was it. Next up, Valentino sent me their loose glitter. And interestingly, this is for cheeks and lips only, which makes no sense to me because I would only want to put this on my eyes. What's really annoying about it is that it is literally a loose glitter. So if you open the pot, you get a brush and then inside it's it's just loose glitter. And I'll try to apply it on the back of my hands, but really you can't even get it to stick without using some type of like glue for the glitter. So that's what it looks like. It's a really nice pink glitter, but it doesn't align with the Valentino brand. I don't know, maybe someone could give me a little bit of fashion and beauty history, but I have not seen any Valentino campaigns that really align with a very chunky loose glitter. When I think of Valentino, I think of sophistication and I don't think of like pink glitter. So I'm not really understanding what this product is about, but I also haven't looked up any campaign photos. So maybe it's all part of like a different aesthetic for them. I'm not so sure, but I just really don't like the mechanism of this. If they had put this in some kind of a glitter gel, like the Stila Glitter and Glow eyeshadows, that would have been amazing. But considering this is supposed to be for cheeks and lips, I don't know what's up with that. I would never want to wear loose, chunky, powdery glitter on my cheeks or lips ever. And I especially don't want to pay Valentino prices for it. So this one for me is definitely a pass. Moving along, Vacation sent me a nice little PR package with some of their summer essentials and they included their SPF 30 baby oil. Ugh. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. Uh -uh. it's a pass. First of all, this leaks everywhere and I'm not sure why, but I like very gently set it down somewhere and it leaked all over my table and stained the table. So that's cool. But that is definitely my fault. Um, this smells like baby powder. And I feel like that was probably a choice because Vacation Ink likes to evoke scent memories and nostalgia. So maybe the whole baby powder smell is something that they like. Um, I don't like 
any kind of face oil or body oil. I don't like the feeling of oil. I feel like oils just sit on top of the skin and they make my skin feel drier, but like greasy. Every oil I've ever tried. I just, my skin and oil does not get along very well. So for this being an SPF 30 oil, one day I had run out of my uh, vacation classic lotion, which is my favorite sunscreen to wear on the body. And I used this instead and I rubbed it all over my body. And then my hands were so oily and greasy. I couldn't even touch my phone. My phone was getting all like cloudy and disgusting. So for me, I don't love the baby oil, but I really, really, really love their classic SPF SPF 30 lotion and they just launched an SPF 50 version of that that I purchased and I really enjoyed. So let me know if you want a review on that in a comparison to the old version. But for me, I would say skip the baby oil. I have a new launch for you that I haven't even reviewed on my channel yet, but I know it's a fail. So I have to sneak it in here, unfortunately. It's the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Concealer. It's the Smooth and Blur Concealer. This is not right for me, but I can see a lot of people liking this. But for me, obviously everything on my channel is subjective. This is all just based on personal preference. So shit that that doesn't work for me might be your favorite product ever. I just want to give you the overview of what this product is like, and then you can decide if it's going to be for you or not. I just think this is a worse version of their old HD skin concealer, the self-setting one. That one was creamier and had more coverage. This is super thin and lightweight to the point where I can barely get any coverage out of it. It blends so quickly. It's almost too fast. Like I just can't get the coverage to stay where I want it to. It is feather light. Like they claim you truly can't even feel it on the skin. Um, um, it's just, it's so incredibly liquidy and so sheer. I also don't see any blurring or smoothing quality from this whatsoever. I get way more blurring from my beloved Fit Glow concealer. And also, unfortunately, the shade range is quite yellow. I'll show you in the back of my hand. Keep in mind, the colors that I'm about to swatch for you are rosy colors. So they're supposed to be pinker. Unfortunately, it's not the case. So this is my best match, which is 1.5C. And I can totally get away with this under the eyes. It is, I would say, like in between neutral and cool pink. It's just just, I would say it's like neutral with like a hair of pink undertones in there. So that's 1.5R. This is just unfortunately a little bit too light for under my eyes. And then this is 2R, which is supposed to be a rosy shade, but it is incredible incredibly like peachy yellow. So it makes no sense. I honestly am just so sick of concealer shades that are supposed to be cool and are very warm. It's just, it, it's mind boggling. Like every concealer range I try is just so yellow. And I know I'm not alone in this. I saw a bunch of people on Instagram go to Sephora and Ulta over the weekend and they swatched these and every single person pointed out that the shade range was really yellow. Very grateful that they sent this to me to try, but unfortunately it doesn't work for me. A product I purchased for my upcoming best and worst glossy melty bomb video is the Kaja Heart Melter Gloss Sticks. Don't love these. You know, I really wanted to like them, but they are more like a cream lipstick, but in that kind of like glossy lip balm packaging. First of all, do not like this heart-shaped applicator. This is really annoying. I don't like that at all. When you apply this on your lips, sure, you can get like a precise line because it is a kind of more narrow, slimmer bullet, but it's just gimmicky with the heart and it honestly just makes it a little bit difficult to apply. So I don't love it. I also don't love the shade, but I just feel like the formula is very thin, more like a cream lipstick. There's not much shine. It doesn't feel very nourishing or anything. It's just that there are so many cream lipstick formulas out there. I feel like you can get one that's a lot better. Also for that video, I tried the Kosas Wet Stick Lipstick in Malibu. It's just a little bit of a head scratcher for me. Kosas has had so many evolutions as a brand. They started out with this beautiful, sophisticated line of lipsticks with really like nuanced, sophisticated shades, black and white packaging that was chic and timeless. I really enjoyed it. And now, you know, the, the founder Sheena has described it that now she's unafraid to play with color. But I really think what's going on is that she now has investors she has to answer to, and she has to appeal to more of a Gen Z audience. And that's why she's making the colors and the packaging a lot brighter, a lot more youthful. And I just don't connect with that. But also this formula is incredibly thin. It's one of the thinnest formulas I've ever tried. Surprisingly, I like it. It's a nice formula, it has a really wonderful vanilla smell. It's not too slippery, but it is very, very, very thin. So I don't find it particularly nourishing. The issue that I have with this is is the shade range. I don't know if you guys have tried it, but I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys in comments and messages on Instagram saying that you agree. So I'm glad to know I'm not alone. When I went to Sephora and swatched these, I couldn't find a single shade that I liked. And I only ended up buying Malibu online because the tester was sold out and I thought it was gonna work out for me. It's described as a cool pink and that's what it is. But the photos on the website, I'll show you. This is what Malibu looks like on their lips. And it looks like, I would say a kind of medium, 
warm rose, which is what I wanted. That's what Malibu actually is, and you're not even seeing it because it looks a lot darker on my hand right now, but I'll show you in the application footage. It is so much lighter in person than the website made it look. I have a real bone to pick with brands that can't accurately represent their products, and then we end up wasting money, and we end up wasting actual physical materials. I just want brands to do better for us, for all of us, for all consumers and the planet. You know, if brands just for once did like swatches in natural lighting, that would solve so many returns, you know? But I'm on my soapbox right now. I know, I know, I'll get back to the point. Okay, formula, weird shade range, bad representation of the products on the website. I'm still on the hunt for a powder blush that is like my skin, but better. And I was really thinking that the hourglass ambient lighting blush in mood exposure would be just that but it's not. This is weird. It looks like it would be the perfect shade in person, but then on the cheeks, it's like a warm peachy rose. Nothing like the way I've seen it in pictures online and nothing like the way it's described. So here's what it looks like up close. Someone commented on my YouTube shorts review of this that it looks like prosciutto and now I can't unsee it. I think it's so funny. Mood exposure I've always heard is kind of like a muted, dusty kind of beigey mauve. And when I rub my hands over it, it looks like it'll be a good skin color and there's like nothing there so first of all there's just there's almost there's almost no pigment to it it's really hard to build it up hopefully you can see the color a little bit there it's just it's basically non-existent but it's also just really peachy this is the mini version of the hourglass ambient lighting blushes and i don't normally return makeup but i bought this on ulta with points and you know hourglass is expensive i just feel like this formula is way overhyped it was very powdery and i don't like the color so i think i'm gonna return this one unfortunately m cosmetics sent me a PR package with their cushion highlighter. This is in the shade Aurora. It's the Moonbeam cushion highlighter. First of all, I just don't like how bulky this is. Like I would prefer all makeup products to just be as slim and minimal and small as possible. So I don't like that you've got the cushion and then you've got this whole extra part here that you lift up. It's just a very bulky product. But also I just feel like this went on kind of patchy. Yeah, it's almost like it is a liquid. And I think you might be able to see that that went on really patchy. So it's a liquid, but it dries down so fast that I don't have enough drying time to blend it out. And then I'm left with a totally dry cheek that just has like chunks of shimmer on it. So this one unfortunately did not work out for me. Okay, here's a product I liked at first and then ever since I bought it, I have not reached for it once. This is the Refi Lip Blush. So first of all, packaging is kind of cool. I like that it's kind of minimal, kind of unisex. What I don't like is that this arrived totally smushed. I don't know if you're gonna be able to really see that, but it just got super smushed in transit and I read a lot of reviews and I got a lot of DMs from people that said the exact same thing happened to them. So it seems to be happening for a lot of orders, but also it has this like copper penny rust smell. Like it smells like metal. And I saw someone at Sephora said that it smells like a rusting ship. And I thought that was so funny and it 100% does. It is just like pure metal, pure rust. It smells really gross. Don't want it near my mouth. Actually, let me switch it out real quick because I want to show you the color again. So it does feel nice. It's like a matte lip and unlike the Charlotte Tilbury lip blurs, I feel like this is actually a little blurring, but the round bullet shape, considering this is like so creamy, goes way outside my lip lines because I do have thinner lips. So it's a really messy product because there is quite a bit of slip to it. And this is the shade Orchid and online it looks like a beautiful kind of deep pinky rose, almost like a, a pinky berry. But in person it's quite peachy. And you know, I just really don't like peachy or orangey products. So again, you have another problem here where I just feel that the product is not accurately represented on the website. Plus you've got the weird rusty smell and you've got that it smushes. The bullet shape and size just doesn't work well for my lips, so it's messy. Luckily, it is comfortable. As I rub my lips together, it's a matte finish, but it's super, super thin and creamy and emollient, so that's good. But honestly, yeah, I just think that there are better ways to spend your money. You're gonna sense a bit of a theme here. <laughs> the next lip product is the Kylie Cosmetics Tinted Lip Butter, and this is something I purchased for my Glossy Melty Lip Balm video, and it's another case of a product looking completely different from the website. I'm so freaking annoyed. This is basically the same thing as the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss Lipstick Balms, even 
even the same cheap, dinky, thin plastic packaging. Although with this one, at least, I think it's like $18, so it's not Charlotte Tilbury prices. The kind of packaging you can twist up, but you can't twist back down. This is a little bit thinner and more buttery than the Charlotte Tilbury. I do much prefer the Charlotte Tilbury formula because I love something that feels a little more nourishing and is more long lasting. This though is the shade Kylie. And on the website, it looks like it would be this beautiful kind of my lips but better rosy mauve shade, but that's how it looks in person. It's a very light, milky kind of Barbie pink. It just looks absolutely nothing like the website. And I'm really sick of wasting my money on products that are not accurately represented. So for me, I'm gonna try to sell this one because I'm past the return window and I'm just never gonna wear this. Next up, I went to the Chanel counter with my friends in New York and we had a great time and I totally fell in love with the formula of the Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss and I got the color Rose Nave. It has an amazing applicator that is like a cross between a traditional doe foot and something that's a little bit thicker. So I really like that about it. And with the formula, it's this wonderful gloss meets liquid lip balm consistency that I think is so beautiful on the lips and really flattering. Unfortunately, when I first tried this at Chanel, I noticed that it does have a rose fragrance and I really don't like floral scents, but I purchased it because I love the color so much. And I was thinking, you know, it's the most subtle floral fragrance I've smelled, so I'm sure I won't mind it. But as I've owned this for a few weeks, it has just sat there in my drawers completely untouched and I have so many similar products. And I tried this on in my Barbie video. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave it linked on the screen above. It's just all of my favorite pink makeup products. And I realized in that video that I have so many lip products that, that are like sheer light milky pinks that this just really wasn't setting itself apart enough for me. And technically I'm still within my window to return this to Ulta. So I'd rather get you know my money back for something like Chanel prices, or I'd ideally rather find a subscriber who'd wanna buy this at almost full price because I've only used it like two times. So the TLDR version of that is great formula, but I have a lot of similar colors and the fragrance is just throwing me off. But man, if this had a different fragrance, this would be like one of my all-time favorite lip products. The formula is incredible. I only have two more, I promise. I'll be super fast for my glossy, melty lip balm video. I did try the About Face Cherry Pick Lip Color Butters. Really don't like these. The scent is overwhelmingly, oh, oh, oh that was a mistake. Artificial peach, oh, ooh, ooh, that just gave me like a headache. That made me feel sick. I swear to God, I'm not being like purposely dramatic. I hate when people do that. I have sometimes like visceral reactions to fragrance. I'm super sensitive to it. I can still feel it and smell it in my nose. It's so strong. It, oof, it honestly like made me sick. If you're sensitive to fragrance, I would skip these about face lip butters. You know, I really couldn't find a color that I liked. There are a lot of cool shades that I hadn't seen before. So I think about face in general is just really great with shade ranges and formulas. So I think a lot of people could find some great colors that maybe they haven't seen before. So definitely don't want to knock the shade range or the product, but I personally couldn't find a color that I liked because these are so crazy pigmented. I have the shades Kiwi Fuzz and Berry Smash. Oof, I'm swatching them and I can smell them from here and it is not fun. So this is Berry Smash. It's just way too purple for me. And then Kiwi Fuzz is way too gray. So the shades, the level of pigment combined with the fragrance for me just make it one that doesn't align with my preferences, but that doesn't mean it's a bad product. I can still see a lot of people liking these. And lastly, Beauty Pie sent me their new, they don't even say, unfortunately, on the packaging, um, but I believe it's their new collagen. Oh, I gotta look this up, okay. These are the Wonder Gloss Lux Sheer Lipsticks. And they're basically supposed to be the lipstick version of like their collagen lip oil. And they have refillable packaging. So the way they come, so you buy the refillable packaging separately and it just clicks together like that and it's empty. And then you get the little lipsticks and they come with a, a little cap on them that I took off. And then you can add them to your lipsticks. But here's the thing, they do click in easily and then you can twist them up and down, but there's no indication of what color it is on the packaging. There's not even an indication of what the product is. So I have all three shades, but I don't know in my drawers what I'm reaching for. I would have to go, Okay, that's that one. Okay, that's that one. Every single time and like, I ain't got time for that. Also, this formula is fine. It's fine. It's like very oily, very thin, super duper sheer to the point where they like barely show up on my lips. I'm swatching a million times and I can barely get any color payoff. So, you know, that's just not something I'm interested in. I also really don't like the colors that they created for this line, which sucks because I feel like Beauty Pie usually is really great at lip colors. So on the back of my hand, we have Solar Nude, Beach Peach and Sheer Rose. And the peach is really an orange and that's the one that's the most pigmented. This is like 15 layers of Solar Nude. And then Sheer Rose, this is like 10 layers of Sheer Rose. They're just 
thin, they're quite slippery, they're incredibly sheer. There's only three shades. I don't really like the cheap feeling refillable packaging without any label. Although I do commend them for refillable packaging. You know, it's nice that they have a minimal kind of style and something that you can just pop right in that's very, very minimal. I think this is a step in the right direction in terms of sustainability. You know, it's possible that maybe on the website they have labels that you can buy and maybe they just didn't send them to me. So I don't wanna totally knock them for that. But the formula for me is just not special enough. I personally just think that they're, uh, oh shit, what is it? The Future Lipstick Luxe Shines. Those are like one of my favorite lipstick formulas of all times. And if you have a Beauty Pie membership, I would probably go with those. That's it. Those are all the fails for me for the month. Let us know in the comment section below what your fails were this month so we can just all help each other out. I'll leave a video on the screen if you wanna keep watching my content. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps YouTube to recommend, recommend, to recommend our channel to more audiences, helping us to grow and making all of the hard work worth it. And wherever you are, I hope you're having an awesome day. I appreciate each and every one of you.